Hi, I'm Casca and welcome to the Great Cos Tube Sew Off. This is the third and final part of this challenge hosted by the super awesome book hoarding by Bianca. In the first video, which I will link here, pretty sure it's that side, <laughs> I did the signature challenge which was to create an item using a free or indie pattern. The second part, which was the technical challenge, was to create something out of recycled materials. And now, part three is the showstopper, which is to complete a UFO. A UFO, in sewing terms, is an unfinished object. Now, for me, I don't actually have a proper UFO. The nearest I've got is I started making a Victorian waistcoat. I did the mock-up and I did another mock-up and then I just threw it in a corner and forgot about it for a while. Then I did a big clear out, found those bits and was like, yeah, I'm never gonna use these, so threw them out. The reason why it didn't work was because I was incredibly lazy. I found the free copy of the Keystone Guide to Jacketing Dress Cutting, found the waistcoat pattern that was in that, put it into Photoshop, messed about with it a bit in Photoshop to make like the waistline my size and stuff, printed it out, made a mock up with that. The problem is, even with my digital manipulation, the drawing in that book was nowhere near my proportions. So of course it wasn't going to fit. Mock-up number one was laughable. Mock-up number two, it was still laughable. <laughs> so that's why it ended up going into the naughty corner. At that point, I wasn't very confident at all with pattern drafting. I'd done a bit doing more kind of retro, like vintage stuff, but I hadn't done any proper pattern drafting, like from scratch using my measurements for Victorian stuff. And I'd looked at that image and all the list of instructions in the Keystone Guide and my brain basically melted out of my ears. But now, I'm gonna give it another go. I have the actual physical book for the Keystone Guide, which I do find it easier to follow instructions and stuff if it's written out in front of me rather than looking on a website. So I have also now drafted two basic bodices from that book. One using the measurements from my 1880s corset and one with my Edwardian corset. So I feel reasonably confident in doing an 1890s version of it. Then it's not that much more difficult, I hope, to do the extra measurements involved to make it into the waistcoat. The fabric that I'm going to be using for this is the same fabric which I used for my cape. It's been sat in my stash for ages now, just this little bit that's left that's enough for a waistcoat. So I'm hoping that will be able to go with lots of different things. I've got a grey walking skirt that that will go with. And yeah, I am looking forward to getting stuck into this. So without further ado, let's get patterning. Okay, so I've got my waistcoat pattern. It looks very messy right now because we've got all the pencil lines and then the pen lines on top of it. The instructions weren't quite as good as I would have hoped. <laughs> it was a little bit difficult to follow in places. Uh, there were lots of times where it says to mark up to a certain letter or number and then I couldn't find anywhere in the instructions how you got to that number. Also, the collar, it basically just says, draw it in. 
I think I've got a reasonable pattern though. I've got somewhere to start from which is going to be better than what I had last time because this at least takes my measurements into account properly. So I'm going to do a mock-up of this and see how it looks. Okay, so mock-up number one is done. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. My first mock-up that I did using the basic bodice block, that one needed a lot of work, but this isn't too bad. Needs some taking off just in this area. I've not accounted for the overlap yet. I'm going to add that in later so I can do all exactly the same amount. But yeah, it's fitting pretty, pretty well over the bust. Just needs to come in a little bit here and then it's fitting okay at the bottom. I would like it if the lapel was a little bit bigger. This is the way they said to sketch it in the book, but I just think it looks a little bit small and piddly. So yeah, I'll probably increase the size of that. The neck is coming up too high at the back, so that will need to come down. That was expected. The, when I draft the patterns, they always end up being too high at the back. A little bit of room still at the back, so I could probably do with taking that in about two centimetres on each side. And I've got some excess fabric flapping around at the back of the arm side. So what I'll probably do to get rid of that is make it into a dart, swing it round and take it out here. Uh, only other thing is the shoulders are a little bit wide so I need to take them up just a little bit up to about here. Other than that though is pretty good so I'm going to do another mock up and then I will get back to you. Right, this is what I've drawn up for my second draft. As you can see, I've taken some out around the belly area. I've made that dart a bit bigger. I've narrowed the shoulders, made the collar a bit bigger, and I've put that big dart there. What I need to do is figure out a way to swing that dart down to here. If it ends up being too big, I might end up having to make it into two darts as well. I'll have to have a look at some examples and see if there's ever been a waistcoat with two darts in the back. It does concern me a bit, especially since the instructions did tell me to merge the front two darts into one. So I'm not sure if there's another way of removing that f amount of fullness though because there was a lot of flappiness. I'll do a little experiment and see how it turns out. What I ended up doing was moving the dart from here to here and then joining it to this one and then I cut open this one through the middle, cut open this one on one side swung it closed and then that opened this dart up. So now I've got this closed and this much larger dart. It wasn't quite as big as I was worried that it was going to be, so I think I've got away with it. I've also now got this lovely long facing piece. This is for the front and the collar section. What I did for this one, and it may or may not work because I've never done anything like this before, I drew out the shape of the front of the bodice, then I folded it in half and then I kind of walked the collar pattern along this line. So fingers crossed that fits. Okay, so definitely big improvement on the last one. Everything around the neck feels good now. No more bagginess in the back arm side. I've got a little bit of excess here and I'm not entirely sure whether I should 
make this into a dart and then swing it round or just pad this area out because it's the little boob shelf area. I'll probably do another mock-up with the dart swung round just to see what that's like and if the hollow is still there then I can pad it as well. Other little things, I feel like I'd like it to be a little bit longer at the back and the sides. It's only around an, an inch or so past my waistline so I think I'd like it to come just maybe another inch further down. I've also got some little misalignment issues so I need to fix them and I feel like maybe because I'm getting some wrinkling and pulling around here so I'm thinking I might need a little bit extra room just going over my high hip and maybe even a little bit more taken out in the waist. So one more mock-up. I'm hoping it's just one more mock-up. Something I worked out as well is I'm a little bit stupid. Um, reading the instructions through, I thought that it wanted me to cut out the collar section separately because it does say and trace this onto some paper later. I don't know if I skipped over some steps or something because I'm super dyslexic and I find like reading walls of text like that kind of difficult. But I re-watched Bernadette Banner's video on making a waistcoat using this pattern and she included the collar section onto the front bodice section which if I did that it would have made making the facing so much easier. So I think I'm going to do that. Okay so new pattern cut out. As you can see I have now added the collar bit to the front of the bodice. I have done a new facing. Uh, I also shaved off a bit on the back because the bit of excess that I had going on was mainly towards the back and it's because I've got a bit of sway back. I've also extended it a little bit at the bottom as well just because as I said I thought it was a little bit short so I'm going to do a mock-up of this and we will see how it goes. That mock-up looked good so it was time to cut the fashion fabric. I stitched all my darts, then I attached everything together at the back, sides and shoulder seams. I did everything twice, once for the fashion fabrics and once for the lining. Everything got a good press. I know, I'll probably burn my hands at some point doing this, but I don't have a clapper. Right, so I now have a lining layer and an outer layer. Everything's been pressed on the inside. And what I need to do now, right, I've, got, I've got a problem. I don't have any horsehair canvas to interface this with. I asked for some advice online and if I'm not planning on washing this, then I could use some of my leftover tarlatan. The other option I had suggested was felt. Looking at the uses for felt and in interfacing, I'm not 100% sure. Tarlatan, I've got some and I know what it does. So I'm thinking I'm going to use that instead. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosely pad stitch it so that at some point 
if I ever manage to get some horsehair canvas, I can replace it later. So what needs to happen now is I need to cut out some tarlatan in the same shape as this. Pad stitch that to this bit and then attach this to this and flip it inside out. Then all I need to do is attach the lining. This ended up being a good opportunity to practice my pad stitching. I was careful to only pick up a couple of threads on the outside so the stitches wouldn't show that much. Okay, I'm actually quite impressed. I was thinking, because Tarleton doesn't have the same qualities as the horsehair canvas, that it will basically just act as, like, the same as an iron-on interfacing. But, with the pad stitching, it is actually holding its shape. That's pretty cool, I was not expecting that. So, yeah, obviously, again, at some point, I'm probably going to rip all this out and replace it with horsehair if I do like the look of this waistcoat. But for the time being, I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. <laughs> I pinned the facing to the front bodice and then stitched it down, taking care around the points of the collar. I clipped my corners, turned everything right way out, and then attached the lining of fashion fabrics together along the bottom. I have used a million and one pins to tack down my facing and to just make sure everything's lining up properly with the lining. What I need to do now is give that a hecking good press. Both of these fabrics are quite bouncy, so it remains to be seen whether I end up needing to do some top stitching as well, just to hold it in place. I'm not sure if that's very Victorian to have a load of top stitching on there, but if it doesn't want to lie flat, I might have to. Once I've got everything pressed, I need to hand stitch the facing, and then I've got to do the neckline the armholes and add buttons. The facing was stitched down with whip stitches and the armholes with slip stitches. I then added buttons and buttonholes. Off camera I also added some boning to the inside.
you know what? I'm pretty pleased with this. Yes, there's a couple of little wrinkles here and there, but on the whole, the fit is quite nice. The fabric choice, on the other hand, I should have learnt my lesson when I made the cape. I should have just thrown that little scrap away because there wasn't quite enough. So I ended up having to shorten the waistcoat, which considering I thought that it was a little bit too short anyway, was a bit of a bummer. The fabric is also super bouncy. So I have pressed these so, so many times and it's it just won't hold it. <laughs> I've steamed them and then laid my elbows on them to flatten them and no, not having it. <laughs> Also, because I had such a small amount of fabric left, I wasn't able to pattern match. And I feel like this is such a bold print. It needed to be pattern matched, really. The most obvious place is the collar, where I've got a big strip of white here, but they're not on that side. It's not too far off on these bits, but yeah, on, on the collar, it's just no. But there was no way for me to physically be able to pattern match it because I just had such a tiny amount of fabric left to do the facing with. So that is another lesson learned. Double check that I have got enough fabric for a project before starting it. The back looks great though. I'm really happy with the way that looks. I did put a little hook just at the bottom before the little V. Um, and I've attached a corresponding loop on the skirt because this skirt likes to ride down a little bit at the back because of all the pleats, it's quite heavy. So I'm really glad I did that, it just makes it look so much neater and it also kind of hides a little bit that it's a bit too short. Overall though, I am really, really pleased. I'm definitely going to use this pattern again. It's been folded up and kept in my pattern collections. So one day I will get some decent fabric, like a nice tweed or something, and make another version of this. And I will get some horsehair canvas as well, so I can do this properly. <laughs> this has been such a fun project to do though. Thanks again to Book Hoarding by Bianca for coming up with this idea. Like, it has been really fun and it's been great seeing all the videos from other people. There is a playlist for this and I will leave that in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this little series as much as I have. And if you have enjoyed this and want other costuming content, then doing all the youtube -y things, liking, subscribe, comment, share, it's all greatly appreciated. Also, if you would like to help support me in other ways, I do have a coffee account, which I will leave a link to in the description. Thanks very much for watching, and if you feel like sticking around, you might enjoy this video right here. I will see you next time. Bye!